Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, this is Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Eagles, Giants this week. Don't forget the Inside the Birds podcast, the Inside the Birds pregame and postgame show Sunday before and after every Eagles game. Jeff Mosher, Football at Four is here, and he joins me now on Football at Four on a Sports Bash Wednesday, Eagles-Giants week. I got a new chair. I'm a little higher than I normally am, Moach. I look a little taller today, don't I? Inferior. What's that? I said I noticed I feel a little inferior. <laughs> well, you know, we got a new microphone, like, boom stand. So now I can actually stand. So I stand up in the segments that I don't have a guest on. Oh, uh, but okay. when I You're have a, a guest on Pat McAfee now, aren't you? Yes, when I have you're a guest on, you're gonna come in the, the, the t-shirt next. I, I, I have a yes, I have my t- my uh, my cutoff on. So when I have a guest on, I need to sit back down, but I can't because I can't uh, stand because then you wouldn't be able to really see me. Sure, sure. So, you West Virginia guys, you guys uh, all follow each other's trends. I see. Well, right. I realize like sitting down every day. I mean, your ass hurts. So you're you're in this chair for four hours. It's like my gosh. So. It's nice to be able to stand True. up, but they finally fixed the boom on this thing that, you know, the mic can stand right up. All right, well, we don't need to do that. Uh, real <laughs> quick, um, I want to get your opinion. I think I know what it would be. It would probably be similar to mine, but uh, watch the Eagles on Odell Beckham. I never rule anything out, but there's – we. I think we talk about this every free agency about the whole – you know, the Eagles sometimes are, are always in it because they make a phone call and then representation will take that phone call and to their advantage sort of embellish what that phone call might be. You know, we, we talk about this quite a lot. <laughs> then that's why the Eagles are always seemingly linked to this big move and that big move. And, you know, because the, the conversations are often had, you can't rule anything out, but... You know, I it, there is a trend right now of Nick Sirianni sort of talking about if he likes a room, then they don't really do mess with it too much. Um, but he did say, I like the room, we'll leave it at that. So I, I wouldn't rule anything out. Well, I mean, it came from obviously Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, said, hey, last year I called uh, watch the Rams for Odell. This year I'm saying watch the Eagles uh, for Odell. And now, of course, the injury report just came out. And Quez Watkins is on it. So I mm, guess yeah. uh, that would be maybe. I, to me, I said he was limited participation with the shoulder injury. We don't know what that means. But the only way Odell Beckham fits for me, forget, okay, is it a realistic thing? Is he a fit? The only way he fits is if, if Watkins is out for an extended period of time. Well, yeah, theoretically. Or you could just simply say that Odell Beckham Jr. is, is a better wide receiver than Quest Watkins. So if you just wanted to have your slot option, your number three option be the best it could possibly be, then Odell Beckham Jr. would be that. I mean, you don't disagree with that, right? I like Quest Watkins, but I mean, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, I think Odell level. Beckham on the surface, yes, he's a better, has a better resume. He's a better player. I don't know what Odell Beckham I'm getting. I don't know what kind of player and how fast he's going to fit into this offense. Quest Watkins has fit in quite nicely and has seemingly found a nice role in this offense. I mean, is Quez Watkins, is Odell Beckham skill set right now the same speed-wise? as? I mean, is he going to be, are they going to be able to do the same things with him that they do with Quez Watkins? I mean, last year, these are all, these he are was all essentially, a, he was essentially would, uh, a, a know, possession, yeah. he was essentially a possession guy for the Rams last year. Yeah, I mean, that's good. Their, their offense was built a little bit differently in that he he you know they had Cooper Cup who was playing inside and the and the outside and outside they had the remember when they acquired Odell Beckham I don't think Robert Woods was hurt yet right so I th- pretty sure what they were doing was mixing Odell as an inside and an outside guy he was basically their upgrade over Van Jefferson at the time and then Robert Woods got hurt and then he sort of became their second best receiver behind Cup. Um, and was having a nice Super Bowl, if I remember, until he got hurt. He so did. He had a you touchdown. You never know how and, good and... of a, a guy is going to be coming off the ACLs. And we've seen this year that Michael Gallup um, had struggled the first few games. He was coming off the ACL. I'm trying to think of who else was coming out off the ACL at that position. So, it is, and then I think I've, I've read that he won't be ready until, you know, the playoffs anyway. So I, I don't even know if Quez Watkins' situation really 
matters unless Quez is out for the, the rest of the year. Yeah, no, and, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, unless Quez, you said, look, we need to replace him because he can't play. Now, the injury report says he was limited. That doesn't indicate that he can't play or is going to be out for an extended period of time. To me, bringing Beckham in, I just don't know where he fits in. And I'm not saying he's not better than Quez Watkins. I just don't know if he's the right fit for what Quez yeah, Watkins no, there, is. There's, that's fair. I know he's, he, you know, I guess some people would say he comes with a lot of baggage. But, I mean, he was he was good enough at the time for the Rams to take a flyer on. Um, wasn't he coming off an injury for their, from that, too? Uh, when the Rams he, signed him? Yeah, I mean, he had played 14 games overall last year. He might have missed a handful of games with, uh, with oh, Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, listen, he's had two yeah, ACLs. I forgot. Right. This is his second ACL injury. Uh, I just right. and, and that's part of it, too, Moach. And, and not, I'm even taking he might be a – I don't know if he's a – he might be the best human being in the world. I'm not even taking that into account. I'm just saying I don't think the guy's ready okay. to play. I just don't think he's ready to play. So, it, to me, it serves no purpose. Right, but if you're if he's going to be ready to play in the playoffs, you're not going to wait until the playoffs. You want to get him in your system. You want to get him those weeks to get acclimated with your offense and an understanding of where you're going to use him. So that's why when he signs, it's probably going to be very soon, even if he's not ready until the playoffs. Uh, the, 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 the fit question is fair, and I, I'm sure other teams have made moves like this wonder, you know, we made the moves with Robert Quinn saying, well, where do you fit? Cause you got Brandon Graham and you got, uh, you got two other outside rushers and Reddick and sweat, but the, the common consensus is you need as many pass rushers as you can get. And I'm sure some coaches will tell you, you need as much talent on the field at one time offensive yeah. as you can get. Yeah. I mean, and I guess, and we can talk about Quinn and, and that whole situation, but uh, defensive line seemingly a little bit different because you're rotating those guys. You're not taking AJ Brown and Devonta Smith off the field all that much. And there's not enough balls really even to get Quest Watkins integrated into the offense, let alone another well, that's wide the receiver. Thing. That, that is true with Dallas Goddard out, but you can definitely say they were rotating Quez Watkins with Zach Pascal at times with 12 personnel at times. So you bring in Beckham, are you way more than heavy 11 personnel and you don't have to rely if you don't want to on your second or third tight end? And you don't, you can, you know, at that point, I think Zach Pascal sort of becomes the, the odd man out. Right. And plus Mike, um, I think again, all hypothetically speaking, you got five weeks here left. You could have an injury, that wide receiver, just like here with Quez Watkins, you could have an injury at A.J. Brown. You could have an injury at Devontae Smith. And clearly the Rams, in retrospect, made an even better decision signing him at the time they did because then Robert Woods went out with an ACL injury. Yeah. Uh, we're talking- I'm sure they're, they're looking at all the, the big picture benefits as well as the idea of, you know, fit and little picture macro stuff. Uh, we're talking with Jeff Mosher, football of four here. And uh, obviously the Giants are in town. Um, let's uh, kind of focus on them for this uh, uh, next couple of minutes here because this is a giant team that, man, they're limited. <laughs> I mean, they are limited. Now, they run the ball. They like to run the ball. Mm-hmm. They're good at running the ball. Yeah. Didn't we just see this this uh, this this act last week, you know, a team that likes to run the ball? They're good at running the ball, and they don't have a lot yep. of weapons. Do you look at the Giants, though, as a similar offense as, as the Titans? Not at all. Um, you know, I haven't done a, a huge study on the Giants yet and watched them. I don't, I don't know if they're as big of a 12 and 13 personnel team as the, um, as the Titans are. Uh, I don't think their running game is similar from what I, in the few games that I've watched of the Giants. Uh, I've talked about the kind of the diversity of a running game. I thought Green Bay was able to do better against the Eagles because they could run out of 11. They could outside zone you. They could misdirection you. They, they did a lot of different things with two different running backs who were very good, and they were able to get the Eagles in four-man fronts because of it and run against them that way. I think the Giants have a little bit more diversity and explosion to their running game. If you notice, the Titans, uh, obviously, with a guy like um, Derrick Henry, you're running a lot of inside, you're running a lot of, you know, whether, whether it's if it's zone or power. I mean, you're just trying to get him. He He's one of the few running backs that's still eight yards deep um, when they go under center because you're trying to get his him going downhill like a locomotive. And that works for them ordinarily, although he's struggled the last four or five weeks. But with the Giants, I think they're more spread. They're more outside zone. They're more explosive. You got to beware of the cuts. And plus, the Titans left side of the line, we talked about that, right, Um last week leading up to the game, how exposable it was because 
Dennis Daly at left tackle and Brewer at left guard were both backups who were just not good. And and I, from what I've seen, the Giants offensive line is better than it's been in years past. And it's it really is. good at left tackle. Andrew Howard's become yeah. very good. And, Evan, and uh, the other guy on the right side from Alabama is he's getting better. Well, and I brought this up at the beginning, uh, Most You're right. I agree with you. Uh, Andrew Thomas at left and Evan Neal at right. Those tackles are good where their week is on the in the interior, but they kind mm-hmm. of combat that by being more of an outside zone run team than Tennessee, who's better inside to, to run the ball. But if the Eagles can win in the middle of that line, it should be interesting. You know, if they mm-hmm. can get some upward push in the middle of their line, I'm wondering if John Gannon uses a lot more of that five front this week. Yeah, I mean, the five-man front is usually dictated by the offensive personnel. It's usually dictated when you know you're facing a running team and they come out in that kind of, whether there's either fullback, some teams still use the fullback, some teams use the blocking tight end over the receiving tight end. It does become a little bit of a cat and mouse game because you can come out in these big jumbo sets and and run play action. Um, but I, I I see their – I just – and listen, no disrespect to Todd Downing – um, I think he had a bad game. It happens. But I I would say that the combination of Mike Kafka and Brian Dable, probably a little bit more advanced offensively, right, in their thinking of how they want to attack the Eagles with their running game, and that includes with the quarterback as a runner, than you were able to see from Tennessee. And, again, no offense to Todd Downing because he's working with a half-filled deck because his offensive line – Left side was decimated. His quarterback was already hobbled from an ankle injury, so uh, his mobility start was okay to start, but then you know took a hit as it went on. Uh, it's it to me, it's just sort of a completely different scheme and philosophy that you're going against. And and I'd have to say, I think Dable and Kafka are doing a pretty good job, uh, at least making the Giants competitive yeah. and able to move the chains without a whole lot of outside weaponry. There. Oh, most I, I have said many times, and I like uh, Sirianni. I'm not saying that. Um, you know, anything about him. It's more that when, when that job was open, I wanted Brian Dable to be the coach of the Eagles. I thought he would have been a, sure. a great fit here. They ended up going with Sirianni. It's worked out, but Brian Dable has been a great find for the Giants. And I think, you know, this is a huge game for them. You know, we, we, you mm-hmm. know, obviously we focus a lot on the Eagles, but well, it's a big game for the Eagles too. Let's we can get into that because they, the home field advantage is monumental this year, but this is a huge game for the Giants. Cause for me, the Giants, they're in a horrible situation. They tie last week, which works out for them. But now they got to play the Eagles and then go to Washington while Washington sits at home and gets to prepare for you for two straight weeks now. Washington mm-hmm. has a clear advantage in that game when they play. So this is a game where the Giants almost like they have to try to get this game. Yeah, I think the pressure is obviously clearly on the Giants. I mean, the Eagles have a lot more room for a little slippage here. Um, than the than the Giants do, and the, not much. You know the tie. Go ahead, go ahead. Not much. Uh, not much. Unless you're only saying not much if you're saying it's n- top seed or bust. I mean, I I think the Eagles have proven even if something were to happen here and they slip up and they don't get the number one seed, number two seed. I, I there's no team I think that they can't go on the road in the NFC and win a game against because they're just not equipped for it. But I agree that obviously the goal would be the number one. Right. Seed. I mean, yeah, because most now you're. To me, see if you agree, but to me, if Dallas wins the division and gets the two home games, they go to the Super Bowl. If Philadelphia wins the division and gets the two home games, they go to the Super Bowl. To me, it's it's that it's almost that definitive. Mm. Mm. I'm not, you know. Yeah, we lost most. We all froze. Sports Bass Live 97.3. It's ESPN. funny because all okay. year long to hear because I really do believe let me know when I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, no, we lost you there for a second, but I think you're back now. Yeah, I was just saying I probably have sounded since the beginning of the year like a Cowboys apologist more than Eagles fans would like because I really do believe they're a good and talented team. But I cannot sit here 12 weeks into the season and tell you I think the Eagles would lose a playoff game at Dallas. I, I, I'm not saying that you, you definitely win that game. I'm just saying I don't think it's as cut and dried as whoever has that home game wins. I, I I, I think the Eagles can go to any road venue in the NFC and win. I really do. Listen, I think that either team could go on the road and win the game, but I mm-hmm. don't – I think that would be – All right, let me phrase it this way. I would give the Eagles a much better chance of winning a playoff game in Dallas 
than I would give Dallas a great a chance of winning oh, listen, a playoff game. Playing in, in Dallas is no big deal. That, that's not exactly. like some great home field, exactly. you know, thing. That, that place is a joke. So it's right. not like playing in Dallas is. But I just feel like if they, to me, the problem is for any one of the teams is look. Having to win on the road for three straight weeks, potentially, for the, the team that's the wild card team. The team mm-hmm. that's at home, you only have to win two home games. I just feel like, obvious. oh, it's, I'm making an obvious <laughs> statement here, but I do feel it's that it's almost that cut and dry. You know, because if you're yeah. Philadelphia, I get it. Going to Tampa Bay is not all that big of a deal this year, but you have to win at Tampa, and then you'd have to go to Dallas and win that game, and then you'd have to go to Minnesota, most likely, or San Francisco, You'd have to win three straight road games, essentially. That's true. That's a fair point. That's uh, Well, if they got the two seed, the first game would be at home, right? Well, you wouldn't be the two seed if you're the wild card. You'd be the five. Oh, because they won the division, correct. Okay, good point. All yeah. Right. Yep, yep, that's fair. Yeah, the, the, the loser of the division is going to be the five because that's they're right. going to be the best wild card team. So you're going to play Tampa Bay in that first round, but you're always yep. going to be the lower seed no matter what. So you're going to have to be on the road if you're the wild card team three straight weeks. Unless yeah, that makes, that unless makes the 6 or 7 upset somebody. Right. Right. Which this year the way things are going, who knows? Like that 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 wouldn't shock me. <laughs> right. So that's why to me the home field it, it's Forget being the number one overall seed. It's the division champion in this particular mm-hmm. battle drops to five and has to play right. on the road three games. And that's, to me, that's a lot to Great ask. Point. Totally agree. Yeah, and I know that because, to me, you know, Dallas, look, Dallas could be the best team in the league any week. They, when they're on, they look like they could be the best. Same with Philadelphia. But when they don't play their best, mm-hmm. Dallas, they lose to Green Bay, <laughs> you know, uh, because. Yes, yes. Yeah. And look, when Philly doesn't play their best, they lose to Washington. So you can have that week. But right. to me, it's the way Dallas loses the game. They played their game and lost. Dallas, or Philadelphia mm-hmm. just played a game that there was like an outer body experience and lost. They have not looked like that. Dallas played that game pretty similar to the way they play. They just, you know, didn't play their best. But they don't stop the run all that well. Neither does Philadelphia. But, you know. Mm-hmm. That, that style of game for three straight weeks for them on the road, I think, is going to be tough. Yeah, I could see that being an issue. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So Definitely. this Giants uh, – let me get one more thought on this Giants team because the offense, very limited. Last week, the Titans could be had in the pass game. Where's the spot you think they can go at? Because the, the Giants love the blitz. I mean, the, if you're an Eagles fan, you would love the Giants defense. Absolutely. So I think the same thing stands. I think they have an opportunity to gash the Giants in the pass game. Uh, the, now, the Giants have a pretty good pass rush. Well, Jeffrey Simmons, the Eagles, I'm sorry, the Titans did too. Um, I, I just think that the, the corners that the Giants are, are, I think the Giants have a beat up secondary, if I'm not mistaken. So um, I don't know if are Jackson and, and um, I think it's Fabian Moreau that they've been playing with or Cordell Flott on the outside. Moreau's uh, on that team, yep. Just, yeah, they just don't have a ton of talent right now. And I know Xavier McKinney, who is such a good, good safety, a really good young safety, has been – I think he's on IR, so he probably won't be uh, in the game. So I just think this is – you look at this team, and as long as the Eagles can block it up, and they've been pretty good at that this year. Uh, I mean, Jason Navon made a great point. H- how many teams can have 12 holding slash false start penalties and still win a game by 25 points? Oh, I thought that was maybe one of the stories of the game, right? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, so I, I really think that the opportunity is there to throw on the Giants. As sloppy as they played, as many penalties as they had, that game was never close. Um, no. Jeff Bosher's in the house, InsideTheBirds.com, the Inside the Birds podcast. Don't forget the Inside the Birds pre- and post-game show on all their social media channels, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. You can check them out at 10 o'clock game day. Uh, inside the birds pre and post game show after the Eagles game is over. And of course, Andrew's here tomorrow. Adam's back on Friday. Jeff Mosher breaks it all down Monday on football at four. Thanks, Mosh. You got it, Mike. Have a great one. And a good uh, conversation with him as we take a look at the seedings there. We know that, yes, the number one seed is the, um, the division champion will be the one or the two seed.